Right, I'm carrying on down here. What happened? My, I've used up 16 gigabytes, well, it'll be 14, on the memory card. A uh, good job I noticed. It wasn't far away, just back up there. Clouds are getting circling again. But I'm actually going down Shepherd's Coombe now. I uh, just passed Bicknoller Post when I noticed there was something wrong with the um, camera. But fortunately, I identified it early. It does come up on the screen and tell you. I mean, I had a camera once and never used to tell you, and you'd think you'd been videoing loads of good stuff, and then nothing comes out. But this one, this one does. So this is another memory card. You can tell it's been a big walk. If I've already used up a whole card, then that is big walk. I have been doing quite a lot of uh, video footage. Um, it's gone very quiet and it's very scary. I was just talking about thunder and lightning when it, it went dead because the memory ended but as you can see we're being skirted by very big clouds that are being drawn towards the east towards the Mendip Hills so I'm but I'm going down now into it doesn't even matter if I got drenched I, all I'd be want to do is protect the cameras basically that's a big, that would be my main priority that I've got a carrier bag and that in there um, that would be a priority. So here we are, look, our favourite little walk back. I always like this. This is a good hour's walk, by the way. Um, there'll be more shelter down there than there is here at the moment. Put it that way. Um, I'll just check the time again. Feels like it's going to pour in a minute. It's quarter to five. It's the turning point. Five, six o'clock, turning point for weather. I think we could easily, look at that, that could easily open up. Although I called out to David Bowie to blow it away. He did for a while while I was climbing up that hot hill. Um, so you can't overdo it asking for help, can you? But look how green and lovely and lush it is. I've got pictures of this all year round, by the way, don't forget. I've done this coom a few times in the last 12 months in different seasons. So, I can remember talking about the bracken when you couldn't see any. And I said, one day the bracken will dominate. And it does, look. The bracken dominates now, look. And the gnats. I felt a little spot of rain then. I've got my umbrella. But the fact that they're talking about thunder and lightning scares me more than anything. She so think, oh, you mustn't put your umbrella up. Lie flat on the floor, someone said. Don't stick out. I think I feel alright when let's get down into the wood area. I, I do get nervous, you know, about the thunder and lightning. Um, I won't normally go out at all in it, like even out to put the dustbin out or anything. So I'm, I have been quite brave today. Um, and all day it's lived up to what it said. Good weather. It's holding on. But you can tell it's, it can't wait to unleash. Um, fortunately, though it's just there... It's on the edge, and it's being dragged towards the Mendips. So, we're all right at the moment. And of course, when it hits the sea air and all that. So, I am going quicker than I would normally on this little particular stretch, which is very exposed. Mind you, can get struck in the wood. You know, I mean, you're not really safe. You just feel safe because you can't see the big black clouds. You know? See how tall the ferns are, look. You know, when I came up um, a couple of months ago, and especially in the winter, it was all, you could see the bare nakedness of the hills. You know, the bare, what I call the bareness. No ferns, you could see every track, every animal. Now there could be deer just sheltering in the ferns, lying down, you wouldn't even know they were there.
I haven't seen one deer today. I mean, normally I do see deer. You know? Yeah, I didn't mess about going up that hill because of the weather changes. And that extra hour that I, that hour I lost because I started late does make a difference that hour. Between four and five o'clock. This is going on for five o'clock. I mean, it's unprecedented really to have this sort of thing in August apparently. Um, and as far as I know, yeah, August is usually quite a quiet. You might have the odd storm. Um, but you can feel it building up in the air, you know, it's like a storm. But obviously if you've got that following you, then it adds to the environment, the atmosphere. You know, and there's a quietness when the birds stop singing and the wind drops. But of course I am going down into a coom now. But I always remember that when it goes very quiet. And no leaves on the fern stop. You know it's going to come. I used to take, I remember Georgia especially, she used to walk about a lot with me, Georgia, when she was little. I used to take her on the golf course all the time. She used to talk away, beautiful little girl. And uh, I remember once we only just ma managed to get back, there was one hell of a storm came. And I had to make her run and run and run to get back and as we were getting back tiles were starting to fly off the roofs there was a horrendous storm and she was only young she was about four or five I think no, five or six more like it yeah god I had to make a run but I used to say to her we've got to go the wind's dropped it's gone quiet She's never forgotten that, she's Georgie. And her bedroom, from her bedroom, we used to be able to see the lighthouse. Um, I can't remember which light, if it was the big one on the land. One of them used to have a really big light. I think it was the land one, and then it was decommissioned. But it used to um, flash on her wall. And we used to count, when there was a storm, we'd sit on her bed and look out the window. And you could count the times when the beam of light came round and we could count how long it took for the beam to come round and then we used to count the gaps between the thunderclaps as well because then there would be a flash yeah I expect she remembers all that my lovely little Georgie I've got a record of this like I said why I've done an extra recordings today is because I do worry that in 2020 I might not be able to come out here like I do at the moment where I can drive out and park Alberta. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with this Brexit thing. We don't know if the prices are going to skyrocket like petrol, all sorts. We just don't know. Um, it's worrying a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are struggling already, you know, to I'm trying to depict a view and I'm in a beautiful place and sometimes I do reflect about other stuff. It brings it out when you when you love this place, right? And for me, I can't just walk here. You know, I, I had to go years when I couldn't come out here. I couldn't get out here. Uh, for lots of reasons I was um, worked a lot I uh, wasn't always a walker I was a runner and I didn't live around here for long for years so there's that reason and then there's um, what's the other reason yeah your situation changes when you're retired you've got less money because you're not working you've got your pensions look at this lovely view Right, anyway, I'm going to turn off now. That's just a little bit about Sheila's murmurations. This is a beautiful place. Just here with the lichens. The beautiful old trees. They've heard my ramblings for years. My voice changing as I age. Over and out. <sighs>